Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Norton, Education Developer here at Blick Art Materials. We're super excited to present to you this very fun uh, foliage watercolor painting demo. We're going to be using our own Blick Artist watercolors and layering them onto this 140-pound uh, cold press uh, watercolor paper by Arsh. Uh, we're pulling that watercolor paper off straight from the block and I've just safely adhered it to this piece of half inch foam core board as a kind of temporary watercolor board surface. We're going to layer up the watercolors uh, to get the colors uh, incredibly saturated. Uh, we're going to play with some light and shadow and painting in color and using that as light uh, to help uh, create some depth in the foliage that we're painting here. When we look at foliage, we see that it's all green and we think, let's just paint it with one color. But I'm going to show you that through using an analogous color palette, uh, so colors that are situated close together on the color wheel, we can use those similar colors to help describe some of the light and shadow that we see in foliage. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, there's a free reference image for you that you can print on the project bundle page where you can find all the materials that we're using here today. And I like to start with just a quick light sketch on watercolor paper. You can just use a regular HB pencil and uh, you don't want your sketch to be too dark because certainly you don't want uh, that pencil line to show through. So just a little bit of uh, that sketch is going to go a long way. You mostly want to make sure you know where your leaves end and where these fun little openings are um, that are so signature to the monstera leaf. We have these negative spaces that we're going to deal with. So actually our very first step, aside from getting that sketch laid down, is to use a little bit of this Utrecht watercolor art masking fluid. It's an off-white color and it, it's a little bit of a latex mixture. And I'm just going to put a little bit down here on my palette. You don't need much. And what this is going to do, once it dries, is it's going to um, not allow any watercolor to saturate that area of the paper. So I have a craft brush here uh, that I'm going to use. And uh, you can just use any craft brush or rubber painting tool that you might have. And we're going to go into this sketch. And anywhere that there is um, a little uh, negative space, that we want, we're going to paint the masking fluid there. It's just going to help us um, be, uh, work a little bit more quickly and a little more freely to get some of these layers painted in. And you don't have to spend a whole lot of time um, on this step. It's just a little something extra that you can do. And it's also optional. So this isn't required um, to complete the painting, but I find it to be a very useful tool, especially with designs like these uh, that kind of rely on that negative space to tell uh, you what it is. So I like to do this little step. It's non-yellowing, so it's not going to leave a stain uh, when you go to take it off, and it dries extremely quickly. So you don't have to worry about waiting a long time for it to dry. And um, you can apply two coats if you want to. Um, it can help it to be easier to peel when you're ready to take it off. And let's just do a couple more spots here. I only see a few more. And you don't have to do it all over. You know, don't spend all your time on the masking fluid. It just helps to keep the process tidy. Just looking for anywhere else where I might want it. Okay. All right, and that's really it for your masking fluid. Um, you do want to try to get some of that out of your brush. Um, you might even just dedicate that brush to applying masking fluid moving forward because uh, it's going to be hard to bring that back. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a watercolor wash, which means I'm going to add um, 
water to these uh, uh, tube colors that I've put down on my little round well palette here. You can use any palette. Um, this one I like because I can uh, map out my colors and I can leave a little well in between for the colors that I mix uh, from these. You can go as intense or dark in these washes as you like. That part of the decision making is totally up to you. So, um, you know, the more paint you use, the more paint to water ratio uh, you use, then the lighter your color is going to appear. So I'm going to go ahead and mix these colors for us. And we don't have to think too hard about a technique here. I'm using the Utrecht Synthetic Watercolor Brushes, and it's just a very perfect watercolor brush, uh, if I do say so myself. These round brushes are really going to be ideal for what we're doing. Now my big thing about paint brushes is to use the size paint brush and the shape paint brush that matches the area that you're painting. So I have a range of large to small round brushes here that I'm going to be using. And I do want to make sure that I have a nice large round brush like this number 10 because it's going to help me to fill large areas all at once. And you'll see why that's useful here once we get started so that we're not painting little brush strokes to fill in all of this space. So let's get that incorporated. And you do want to take time to make sure your colors are mixed thoroughly. So I know this might seem like lots of anticipation, but we want to make sure we get them incorporated so that we don't have a chunky, a chunky watercolor. Perfect. And doing this also gives our masking fluid some time to set up. So if you're thinking about drying times and when you can start to apply the color, if your masking fluid isn't totally dry, then it might find its way into your wash when you put it down. So you just want to make sure that that has enough time to dry. So the colors that I'm using here, um, just going through them, I have a phthalo yellow green here. I have an emerald green, viridian. This is actually an indigo, which is nice when it comes to shading. And then last but not least, I have a little bit of yellow. And that's my last color to mix up. You can get this full range of colors and that free printable reference image on our bundle page. So check that out at any time as we're working here. All right. I think we've got them all mixed up now. So let's go ahead and get started painting on these washes. Now I have two cups of water going, just in case you can't see. Um, one cup of water I'm using to clean my brushes, and the other cup I'm using to get clean water from um, into my pipette so that as I need it, I can keep it clean and I can add it uh, where I need it to go. So um, let's start with our medium green here. Um, I've got this emerald green and I have these very useful little wells in between my colors that I can mix custom colors. So make a habit of that. You know, you've got all this beautiful color to work with. You can mix it down to make any color combo that you want. And then I can make it more transparent by adding a little bit of water. So we're gonna kind of work in that way and we're gonna get a really nice range of greens out of this limited color palette. So I'm using my largest brush to start and I'm just going to go ahead and paint these leaves in with one flat wash layer that goes all over. So I'm taking the liberty, if you will, 
to um, establish a tonal layer. And if you think about it that way, this is really just going to uh, help you set some groundwork and um, it's going to be a really easy way to uh, create some layers to build on. And something that's interesting that happens um, when you are applying color like this um, is that you have an opportunity to lighten or darken the color um, while it's still wet on the paper. And it's called a wet into wet technique where you incorporate, just like I'm doing here, a wet color into the already wetted surface. And this is how we're going to approach bringing light into different parts of this painting. So you can take any of these colors, you can kind of slather them on, which feels really good because it's fun to use um, a whole lot of paint and not have to think so hard uh, about the technique that you're after, at least at first. Now, I can also take some of my darker colors, make sure they're nice and incorporated here. And I can do that same thing. I can make an area darker or I can make it lighter. All right, so let's work to combine these colors and cover this area. All right. Now, some of you watercolor painters out there might be wondering if you should wet your paper first. And this question came up recently and I wanted to take um, an opportunity to talk about, you know, when we need to wet our paper when we're working in watercolor. And um, the short answer to that, I guess would be, you know, you can wet your paper at any time in the process um, as long as your timing is right. And I know that that's kind of a twisted way to say um, the same thing, but I, I guess my point is here. One, let's break it down into opportunities. So one reason you would wet your watercolor paper would be before you do any painting at all. And the reason you would wet it, uh, you would wet it all over uh, you could, you know, basically dunk it in a pool of water or a tray of water, and then you would smooth it out onto a watercolor board, and you could staple your paper to that watercolor board, and that is called stretching your watercolor paper. When you soak that paper in water and you stretch it out over a board and you let it dry, um, that is how you stretch your paper. It removes the sizing from the watercolor paper and it keeps the paper from buckling and warping as you work. And there's a huge advantage to that, particularly if you're going to be working over the whole surface of your paper. So if we were painting a background, if we were painting a sky or an atmosphere of some kind or a setting where you know we want to work the whole paper, then that would be a case where we would want to stretch it. And you can see I'm able to just work right over the masking fluid and get this watercolor down. Um, so if you're stretching your paper, you leave it stapled onto the board. This is just a foam core board. This isn't watercolor board. This works for our purposes, but isn't meant for watercolor paper stretching. And so anyway, uh, you would leave that watercolor paper on the board while you work. And uh, it's a wonderful way to um, get your paper good and absorbent uh, before you get started. 
So there's a little technique to keep in your back pocket. Now what I've done here is I've taped down my uh, watercolor paper with artist tape and that helps me just enough, um, keep it stretched just enough that it's not going to buckle and warp too badly. But I could leave it on the block. I don't have to separate it. I could leave it on the block and that keeps the paper stretched. Um, but if you're working with multiple sheets uh, like I am, I like to go ahead and just take it off and then just use it as a typical paper. So these are all um, excellent techniques. Now, if you're leaving it stretched on the paper or on the block, you don't need to take the extra steps to stretch it, right? You don't need to wet the paper. You just need to work right directly on it. Okay, so one reason you would wet your paper is to stretch it. Okay, another reason you would wet your paper is to paint using a wet into wet technique. So if you want to paint your water down on your surface because you want a particular dispersion of colors, then you can wet with a clean brush the object that you want to paint. And then you add your color into that. And let me demonstrate that for you, just quickly since we're talking about it. I don't take too much time off. So I'm just going to wet this little stem here with clean water, okay? And then I'm gonna add a little bit of color. So the difference there being that when you um, pre-wet your color, you're going to cut down the color saturation by however much water you just added into your, uh, that section that you're painting. But um, in addition to lightening it, you might get a more even color distribution when you use that technique. Now, why aren't we using that technique here? Well, we want these colors to go on bright and bold. We don't want them to get cut down with any additional water. So we've already set up our color wash to the intensity that we want. We don't need to uh, worry about buckling and warping because we've already fastened the paper to our surface. So we want our colors to be nice and bold. We've already managed the color saturation. We already have it tacked down. We can do the wet and wet technique uh, with the colors themselves. We don't need to add water first. So I hope that that explains um, a little bit of um, the watercolorist's uh, trade secret when it comes to knowing when to use more water and when maybe not to. All right. And I'm not worried too much about the coverage because the way that we're going to approach this painting is to be um, basically layering each layer upon layer to get the saturation that we want. Now that we're this far, before we move on to our next leaf, um, we have, whoops, drop your brushes. We have a range of round brushes. <clears throat> this is a round size four, it's nice and dry. We want to, while our paint is still workable, we want to incorporate a lifting technique. So um, we had these nice lines where the watercolor or where the uh, Monstera veins go. And so we're taking a dry brush and we're lifting the color out of where those veins are supposed to live. And we're creating a negative space so that we can then fill it back in uh, with that color. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we're just removing that color and then I'm just depositing it back onto my paper towel here. Again, this is called lifting because we're lifting the color off the page. And if your brush needs a little water, 
that can help the lifting process. All right. Get these last couple. And just keep working it until you get the lift. Let's do that here. It's really easy to lift your color while it's still wet. So we're taking advantage of that opportunity, right? And we're just hopping on the bandwagon while the watercolor is still workable. And then we're gonna take our uh, phthalo yellow green. We talked about creating these brighter, uh, more visible vein lines. And we're gonna take that color right out of the tube and we're gonna place it where we want these veins to go. You can be as liberal or as delicate as you want in this part of the process. You can make those lines stand out. And I'm just working quickly with this round size four to get some of this laid down. Now, when we work over this, as you're going to see, we're going to, um, we can paint over and reestablish and relift these lines as many times as we want. And as we build layer after layer, it's going to continue to show through brighter and better than ever before every time we do this step. So keep this step in mind as you're working because you want to take the opportunity to lift the colors, <clears throat> creating a little bit of a groove or a little space where uh, you can deposit that phthalo yellow green. And I really like the coverage that this particular phthalo has um, because I can use it right over these colors and it shows up nicely as you can see. All right, let's get this last leaf painted on and then we'll move on to our next step. So when you're working and you're testing out these watercolors, and of course any watercolors will do, but if you go and check out the bundle page where you'll find that free printable image, you'll see the color assortment that we're using, you'll find the Blick watercolors on that page, and um, you'll see those analogous greens that we're using to work together here. When I'm Looking at my photo from observation, what I want to point out here is that these areas are more yellow. So we use more of the phthalo yellow. These areas here, they're more yellow. So go in and paint your light into those places using your wet into wet technique because your color dispersion is going to stay under control. Okay, and then here where we have more blues or darker greens, okay, just work that right in. So for example here, if you want it to be darker, just drop it in and you will continuously darken or lighten those areas. So let's continue to put that to work here. Okay. So if I want that a little darker, I just bring that right in. Now, uh, one question that I've gotten before in doing uh, processes similar to this is how do you avoid streaking, color streaking, when you apply your watercolors? And what that question is referring to is when you take your watercolor and you make a brush stroke and it sticks there and it dries and then it's there forever and you can't cover it up because your colors are transparent and you've got this brush stroke that lasts a lifetime. 
<laughs> um, here's my advice. Here's what's happening here that's helping us to get an even all over layer. We're keeping the watercolor wet. We're applying um, one coat after another um, and we're keeping the wash connected to itself, right? So the colors stay wet. And because of that, they uh, soak more evenly into the paper. So we're not just, you know, making one brush stroke. We're applying the watercolor in this heavy wash all at once and we're relying on that to eliminate our brush stroke. So that's what's happening. If you have a brush stroke issue, maybe you should think about working in a wash. I think it's really going to help you, um, you know, get that smooth, even coverage that you want in the end. Okay, and again, we're working, able to work quickly because we can just paint right over um, the masking fluid. We don't have to worry about, I mean, if we can even remember back that far, right? We've come so far from the point where we um, first applied that masking fluid. You know, really, um, that can really slow you down trying to think about uh, working around all those details, especially when you're applying a wash this heavy. And remember, this isn't our last layer. This is one of um, several wash layers just like this that we want to paint on. And I'm going to show you what happens when we do here shortly as we punch our way through this last bit of the leaf. Okay. This last tendril on with that round size 10. Okay, now let's do our lifting process. Get a clean brush, dry if possible. I'm gonna use my same round size four. I'm going to lift through the center. Okay. Make a nice space there for that green to go. And then make it happen on the individual leaves. Okay, and remember to try to do this while it's still a bit workable. Get a little extra water if you need. Then take that phthalo yellow and drop it in. Okay, we're going to keep doing this as we work, right? I'm going to get that nice bright streak of those veins coming right through. Careful not to get my hand in the painting. Okay. And how easy is this? Right? So we're not having to think too hard, really, about techniques. Look at all the techniques that we're incorporating without having to, to look too hard to find them. Okay, so we've made a wash. We've practiced lifting. We've talked about wet into wet painting techniques. 
and masking techniques, and it's gotten us all this far. Now, you're not going to want to forget that you have some stems here. All of these details can help to sell that concept. Okay, this is your first layer. Okay, so you're going to want to let this dry. Practice this layer uh, and let's say let's do this at least three or four times, letting each layer dry in between, lifting and reapplying the phthalo yellow, adding in that light or adding in that shadow as your wet layers uh, start to come together to build more of that uh, final piece. But let's move on to our next step. Let's imagine we've already applied two or three layers. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this for now because I'm going to flip this over. And I've already prepared for you a sample with many layers painted on using that same technique. And you can see we've started to get nice and dark here, OK? Let's take this where we have some shading happening in our light areas, in our dark areas, and we have this phthalo yellow radiating through. We haven't taken our masking fluid off yet, so that's one of our finishing touches, okay? Let's take this opportunity. Let's build on our last layer. And what you're going to see happen here after you've built up and built up, the watercolor will start to sit on top of the color that you've applied. And then you'll get a nice, opaque, waxy, Monstera-y finish uh, that is, is going to work well. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you here. Because it's going to be our last layer, we can, if we want to, go ahead and remove the masking fluid. Because I can just paint my way around those. And I can literally just pull these up using a nail or using a tool. You can use a little X-Acto blade and you can peel these away, okay? So we can spend some time on that. I wanted to show you before we um, start to get to a closing point. So I'm going to make some other custom color mixtures here. Now I don't want to forget about my indigo and my yellow. So let's remember to uh, take advantage of those colors here while we can. Oh, we put on this last layer of watercolor and uh, it's going to <clears throat> start to really finalize uh, what our final outcome is going to be. Now you can also take the smaller round brushes and you can work around the edges of your painting and you can make them nice and crisp. So I definitely recommend going around with a detail brush and just crisping up those um, final details. I think it's really going to help. So we can continue to use our wet into wet technique and bringing in this darker color. as a shading item. So it doesn't have to dominate. It's just worked in. And then you can see how we've got this nice shading happening. It's really, um, at this point, it turns into a very delightful uh, fluid painting process. So just like we would paint with, you know, a, a thick paint formula or, you know, a resin where uh, we can kind of push the color around um, on the surface to make it do what we want it to do. That's really where we end up taking uh, the advantage of here, uh, out of the process here. All right. And I can see from here, and I think you can probably see too, um, any of these areas that before look a little, uh, you know, where the color looks still a little transparent, that's really starting to get concealed. 
and you start to get this, you know, opaque look and feel. And that's really what we're after, right? So let's keep working. And here, I'm kind of skipping going over our veins. You know, I could paint over them layer after layer and continue to reestablish them, but because I've worked this, I think I've got three layers. This is our fourth watercolor layer, watercolor wash. Um, I'm just going to work around them, and I'm just kind of refining uh, the lines that are already there and just tidying them up and see how nicely they clean up in this part of the process where they might have been, you know, kind of imperfect before. <clears throat> now we're going in and we're just making them kind of perfect. Now bring your light in to these areas where we talked about there's significantly more light shining on the leaf. And it helps to give you that differentiation. I really like the way that that gives me that immediate sense of light. And mentioning here as well, how important it is to have this range of round watercolor brushes that I can defer to. Look how easy it makes my job to be able to uh, float from one brush to the other. Now, if you're out there and you're wanting to try this design, and um, let's say you don't want to uh, build up layers, you want to work in a transparent wash. These watercolors can do that too. Um, you know, the application, uh, how transparent you want the colors to be, that really is totally up to you. I like um, this heavy application because I like the stark difference in shading and how easy it is to um, accomplish that with these final layers. I find that um, very flattering to the design and um, very easy to control from my perspective. And we're able to, you know, tackle what feels like a lot of complex shading uh, without really having to almost deal with it at all. We're just painting away. And the nice thing about keeping everything kind of consistently wet on the same layer um, is that uh, you don't have to go back and, and rework. You know, you set layer on top of layer and it's going to stick there for you. It's going to stay. But of course, at any time, like here, if I want to lift, again, I can do that. And I can reestablish this color. Because that color really likes to stick. All right, let's get this worked in and I can work quickly because I have so much built up. And for me, in this process, uh, watercolors easily take the precedent over my acrylics um, because of the ease of use. It's easy to activate with water. I really don't need any other painting mediums. I can just pin down my watercolor paper or work right from my block and the convenience is definitely there. 
So if I'm traveling, or if I'm painting in plein air, if I want to paint outside, this is my go-to fast drying option. Or maybe you're stuck inside and you would like to paint your house plant. This is a great way to approach it. This is our last leaf that I am going to paint here before we take off uh, that masking fluid and kind of bring this painting home. And at this point, I'm thinking about my framing options and I'm thinking about where I can place this monstera leaf in my home where I can enjoy it. Maybe I can't fit any more plants in my apartment, so I want to paint them instead. That could be possible. But it is a great subject if you're looking for something to paint and you're looking around your house or your apartment uh, for something that's interesting, think about your plants. Think about um, how you could set them up, uh, make a quick sketch, and uh, easily be on your way with a process such as this. Now for this one, uh, we've taken care of the context for you. If you don't have a monstera leaf that you can uh, go straight away and paint, you can always just print one out that you like, but this one is free and available. So it makes it easy. And we're cleaning up these little edges. And I can take a detail brush to the detail and vein areas and make all sorts of nice marks. Getting really close. I'm really excited to take this masking fluid off and reveal our final piece, so stay tuned as we wrap up this painting. All right. I can still use a fairly large brush for some of these tighter areas. Okay, so let's let that continue to dry. And over here, where it's a little more dry, I can start to peel these away. Just be careful as you do not to disturb some of these layers. I'm kind of working ahead of drying times because I do want to help to reveal some of this. And I'm just going to carefully pull these away. So if you've been tuning in this whole time and you're like me and you can't wait to get these little pieces off, um, I'm excited for you all to uh, reveal your own artwork and your own processes and um, to incorporate your own uh, moments of discovery into the process. And as you work, and I want to be careful um, as these are drying, but I want to show you what you're going to get when it's all done. Um, so you're going to carefully, um, maybe with an X-Acto knife, peel those little pieces away. And you're going to be left with these beautiful little negative spaces. That's really what we're after here. We want this nice, clean, crisp, uh, 
finish. And that's what I'm going to be working toward here. Now, one little thing I want to show you. We saw that sample with those beautiful crisp edges. If you take your little brush, this is my little round size zero. Make sure it's cleaned off. I can go around where my masking fluid was applied and I can clean up that little area inside. So if you kind of have, you know, hairy edges from that masking fluid, you just go in and you just smooth it all out with your little detail brush. And in that process, you're going to make your edges nice and crisp. And I think taking a little bit of this indigo, you can make little edges. I just want to show you this little technique that I love. You can make these edges look nice and dark. Now, I hope you can see that. It's really subtle. But it just helps to give a nice, crisp, clean edge and cleanliness, especially with a monstera leaf design, is so, so important. Um, so where your objects meet or where they are, um, you know, butted up against another object like you have here with the leaves, take that fine line edge and just, you know, bring that in all over. And I think you'll find quickly and easily that this is um, just a little thing you can do to help your painting pop. I love little tricks like this that uh, just help my design to really come together. Uh, this already is starting to look a lot more done. Let's, let's keep that moving. Let's just... And this is indigo, right? So it's not a green but it's coming together here to work with this analogous color palette. Now, if you've been with us since the beginning, we talked about this analogous color palette and the idea that you can have all these colors working together and not creating any mud, right? So there's no brown. We're not... Um, getting, uh, mixing any colors together that uh, aren't meant to be together, right? Just a little bit here. And see how this little bit of outlining gives so much body to the piece. I just love it. And it cleans up that edge for you. And it blends right in. And it's just the right color tone. And you can incorporate it inside of the leaf. Okay, so let's wrap up that notion. All right. I love the way this is starting to look. So I'm for these last couple of pieces, I've got an X-Acto blade just a regular little exacto knife and I'm going to pull up these last few little pieces of masking fluid that are going to help to reveal our final design. I don't know why this one Definitely on there. So when you're putting this on, no more than one to two coats, because you do want to be able to gently remove it. And I usually have a pretty easy time see how quickly that comes up. And once that paint is dry, 
you can go ahead and take this masking fluid off. You don't have to wait necessarily any longer than that. I love the ease of this process. I want to be careful not to scrape too, too much. Got a little piece right there. All right. My last few little pieces and we're all done. There we go. I didn't think that one was going to come off. And then that little piece right there. All right. Wrap this piece up. Take your detail brush. Go clean up these little edges of your painting. Boom. And of course, we can continue to layer and edge and shade and add light as much as we want with this painting. Um, and when we're all done, you're going to be so happy because you're going to take this piece, you're going to frame it, and you can put it up on a nice bright wall in your home and you can enjoy it uh, day after day, day in and day out. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this demo with uh, masking fluid, watercolor painting techniques, uh, using all of these different brush sizes and these beautiful Blick liquid watercolors, or these beautiful uh, Blick Artist watercolors. Um, and we hope you join us for our next demo. We'll see you there.